When I was doing the research uh, for my master's thesis, actually, in history, is when I first came across this print in a book by um, Rufus Wilson from the 1940s. And the book showed a portrayal of President Abraham Lincoln dressed in what would be considered traditional Moorish attire. And I remember looking at that and of course coming from a Moorish perspective and having a Moorish science background. I was curious as to who and this person was who produced that and what, what did this actually mean? Austrian cartoonist Volk does this image showing Lincoln, as he says, under the veil, as if he was saying, I'm revealing who this person actually is. What made this different from the, the usual caricatures of Lincoln, some caricatures that could be seen in things like um, Harper's, which was a, a, a dominant uh, um, journal during the time, would show him almost looking buffoonish or like an ape and things that were very derogatory. But Volk's under the veil was not really anything that was offensive in terms of his phenotype. He just looked like a Moor wearing Moorish attire. So that got my attention because it made me ask the question, did Volk, as a European immigrant, also know that Moors were clearly an African people, but also did he know something about these links to Lincoln's own family? Adelbert Volk was an Austrian who had uh, come to the United States, immigrated to the US, and was known to be a supporter essentially of the Confederacy. And he did this cartoon, it was fairly popular during the day, and even earlier, to do caricatures or cartoons, you know, caricatured images of various people. So Volk did this one of President Lincoln um, sometime between 1861 and 1862, showing him with curly hair, looking a bit swarthier, wearing Moorish-style pantaloons and having a Moorish scimitar and a medallion. And he entitled it Under the Veil. Now, what was interesting about it was that during that time, in the 1860s, Lincoln already had a reputation among many uh, Southern, quote-unquote, whites, many Southerners, that he was of mixed ancestry. Nancy Hanks was said to have been of mixed ancestry, uh, ancestry his, his mother. And when he was elected president, of course, we know that South Carolina shortly after seceded from the Union and uh, basically the Civil War began. Uh, a lot of the negative things said about Lincoln were simply attributed to his being opposed to slavery. But other Southerners surmise that maybe it was because he knew something about his own ancestry. That's another um, topic potentially in terms of you know, uh, coming back to that. But the bottom line is Adelbert Volk produced this caricature showing Lincoln looking essentially like a Moor, basically having um, in awareness in the 19th century that the Moors historically were understood to be a predominantly African people, even though an African people clearly with Islamic roots or connections. Um, this is seen in the dictionaries, it's seen in the coats of arms, it's seen in the literature. Even those who understood that when Shakespeare wrote his play, 
Othello, which I, of course, use that as the theme for my own uh, book, Othello's Children in the New World. Shakespeare clearly knew that Moors were references to African, a so-called black people. And I might even add, recently, um, there was a uh, historian, I forget their name, um, but they gave a presentation where they talked about Lincoln's work with something known as the William Dungey case in 1855. And that William Dungey case was where Dungey in the state of Illinois was found to uh, have gotten in trouble with people in the society who accused him of not being uh, quote unquote white. And they were arguing that he was a Negro. Lincoln defended him and argued that he was of Moorish ancestry. So that's another element of American history that's often overlooked. Now, why wouldn't people look more deeply at why Adelbert Volk did this? In fact, um, Volk had to flee the country um, in part because of his Confederate sympathies. But he came back in 1864, at least according to what Rufus Wilson says, and then um, produced a collection of his caricatures, but mysteriously didn't include this original one of Under the Veil showing Lincoln looking Moorish. So, you know, part of what this suggests to me is there clearly were Europeans, European Americans in the United States in the 19th century who were still fully aware of some Moorish aspect to the history of not just the United States, but the colonies which had preceded it. So that's that connection in terms of, of Volk's uh, Under the Veil and why I included it in the beginning of, of, of the book. I think what Volk was saying was that Lincoln was clearly not of pure European ancestry. And through the mind of this Austrian, Volk, and even in the history of the, the uh, Habsburg Empire, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, there was clearly an awareness of the history of the Moors. Moors were clearly known to be, if you will, predominantly African Muslims. Coats of arms confirm that. Volk, coming from Austria, his sensibilities in looking at or hearing about somebody who had African ancestry would be to refer to them as der Moor, M-O-H-R, which is the, the German or Germanic version of the English Moor, which even has deeper roots that go back to the Latin mores and the Greek mavros, which according to first the work of J.E. Rogers and then um, Gerald Massey earlier in the, in the 20th century. And even uh, Webster's, I think it was the Webster's International Dictionary in, in 1980s, said that Moore is probably of African origin and was adopted by the Greeks, which to me would make, pardon the pun, more sense. So the term in Volk's mind was understood to refer to what people were calling so-called Negroes or colored people or so-called blacks of, of the time.